Now we're going to talk about what happens as we go higher up beyond primary visual cortex, beyond those low level visual processes. And as we talked about in the neuroscience chapter, uh, we have a hierarchy of areas going up from V1 into the temporal lobe. This is the what pathway where object identities are recognized. And this is the main form of compression that we've been talking about all along with that kind of diagram we've seen over and over again, and we'll see again. Uh, and then into the dorsal pathway, you have this uh, pathway through parietal lobe that goes up into and connects with uh, frontal lobe. And that's really important for driving perception to guide motor action. Uh, and one of the major components of that is spatial location information. And so the original uh, story from Ungerleiter and Mishkin was that this is a where pathway, but the more general idea is that it's actually a kind of how pathway. These hierarchies and these pathways can actually be recovered by looking at the detailed connectivity of brain areas. This is the result of an automated technique that was applied to just detailed anatomical properties of the connections between these different areas, showing uh, a division between that same kind of what pathway in blue here versus the dorsal where pathway or the how pathway. And the top of this hierarchy goes all the way up into the hippocampus providing these kind of object representations and event representations that feed into the hippocampus. Here's that diagram again, and this kind of key point over and over again, this compression of that low level information that we see in V1. Now we get a little bit more understanding about where those oriented edge detectors come from, why we draw these as these little oriented edge lines here, drawing the outline of the shape, and then uh, higher levels kind of compressing and extracting more and more relevant information. And so our awareness, again, as we talked about, is all about these high level things. That's where our perception lives. And that's why we don't really see kind of all the details and complexities that are going into those high level abstractions. So this diagram also doesn't include arrows, but these connections go both directions. So there's both feed, feed forward information flowing up and feedback information flowing back down. And, and we talked about this a bit in the consciousness context where this recurrent connectivity by directional flow of activation up and, and back in these networks is really important for that feeling of consciousness. And it also has a lot of effects in perception. So here's a really classic demonstration. Do you notice anything about this? No, probably not. The cat, what's the big deal? Is there anything going on? Well, what about that? What's that? That's an H, right? What's this? What? That's an A. Uh, it's the same. Okay. And so you probably didn't even notice that this is actually the very same letter and you just automatically read it as the in this context and cat is this in this context. It's ambiguous. Um, and that shows you the powerful effects of these kind of context effects. And the idea is that that's going up into higher levels. You're seeing the word the, and also the whole phrase, the cat. And then that feeds back down and it, and it guides your perception even of these lower level features that make up the letter. And so this is a diagram of these uh, connectivity patterns that we see in the cortex where a lower layer down here kind of has this feed forward activation up into higher layers in the network. And this is really the characteristic pattern of connectivity that was used in that prior diagram to see what the hierarchy is in the first place. And then you have these feedback patterns of connectivity that arise from different layers and go back to these same layers here. Um, and these are from higher levels in the network feeding back, influencing lower levels. And that combination of feed forward and feedback that gives you that bi-directional connectivity. And these top-down connections drive these kinds of perceptual effects where we see kind of objects imposed on the lower level visual inputs like this interpretation of these letters. Here's another case of seeing objects where it's really hard to see objects. If you haven't seen this before, this is a case where it's really hard to pull out what the scene contains. But once you do see it, you kind of never go back. You always see it again very quickly. Uh, so you have that kind of high level interpretation of this scene. I'll just point it out to you uh, here. We have a dog. This is a Dalmatian. Here's the head of the dog. There's the front legs. 
back legs, little maybe tail sticking up there, uh, tree shadow over here, some kind of square pattern here. So uh, once you see that again, you, you always see the Dalmatian popping out. And that's because, again, that top high level information, we want to see this coherent, simple interpretation of the scene. We don't want to see a huge collection of random dots, right? And so our brain, once it sees that more simple interpretation, kind of latches onto it. And we think that really depends on that top-down uh, bi-directional connectivity. Now, sometimes it goes a little too far, right? <laughs> so here's a case where uh, this is actually from Google's Deep Dream algorithm, um, but it resembles uh, very much what you see in hallucinations, uh, psychedelic drug effects of psychedelic drugs, where you see kind of, uh, and you can see this a lot with wood patterns and stuff like that, various people even when you're not on drugs, can see these kinds of patterns where you just tend to have a, a preference to see faces and eyes in things. And, uh, and so in this deep dream algorithm, the, the, the network kind of originally recognized the scene and then it had an increase in the strength of these top-down connections in effect where they kind of went back down and changed the scene that was being uh, put into the network to better fit with the internal representation. So this is exactly what we think those top-down connections are doing, is driving kind of our preferred interpretation of the scene. And in this case, you actually get to see it rendered in spectacular form um, out onto the actual scene itself. Okay, so, uh, so sometimes it can go too far to impose the top-down inputs. But on, on the other hand, you want to do some of this, right? So you want to have the ability to see difficult to perceive, uh, very uh, hard to interpret scenes. If there is a simple story out there, you want to be able to pick it up. And maybe sometimes you do go too far as a consequence of that. And Salvador Dali uh, was a famous artist who really uh, you know, loved to, to create these kinds of scenes where at the lower level, there's actually a kind of basic set of you know, properties, features, objects, um, but they form a configuration so that at the overall uh, scene level, there's uh, a face typically that you can see. And you may not even notice that there's actually something more detailed going on here. But if you look and focus your attention and zoom in, you actually can see a perfectly normal scene. And you, you sometimes maybe don't even see the skull um, if you focus really carefully on this. Okay. And so again, our brains really like to see that high level, top high level interpretation, and they impose that top down, even though there's another kind of more basic lower level interpretation of what's going on. Okay, so just more evidence that we have these really strong top down effects in perception. Another form of these kinds of uh, top down effects uh, is in the form of Gestalt principles. And these were formalized and developed early on in the 1900s with the Gestalt School. And uh, so just really kind of going through and identifying all the ways in which various kinds of principles, and they're, they're a little bit loose, you know, there's a lot of them. Uh, it's, it's a little bit unclear, like exactly like where the edge is between one or the other, uh, but they, they do help us understand how we tend to group and organize scenes into sort of simpler combinations. So this, we simplify this pattern of dots by saying, oh, it's three rows, right? Because the dots along the row are closer together. And this is obviously, you know, a case where you have the same color, if they're in contained in the same kind of background region, uh, symmetry principles, uh, the tendency to complete lines. Uh, so you kind of fill in the whole square and just assume there's a little bit cut out because everything else is kind of connecting up uh, et cetera. So there's just, and, 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 you know, organizing things in terms of a common figure and ground grouping. So all these principles really help us kind of simplify and organize scenes.